right now, let's all stand and let's put our hands together for our instructors for the evening, Pastor Dobbins and Pastor Dyer. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. You guys came out tonight. Okay. Who's serious about making money? Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. Now, they've been blowing us up all over the country. Can we give God praise for our online audience, for those watching? Absolutely. Wow. Uh, I have what's called Holy Ghost notes right here. I'm normally not a manuscript uh, teacher or preacher, but this is something that God dropped in my spirit. You are a giant who's been playing small. You are a mogul in the making. Let me switch my. Did you hear me? I said you are a mogul in the making. Uh, you are a business giant on steroids. You're a good man. Somebody say I'm a good man. Where the brother's at? Put a little bass in your voice. Say it with your chest. Say I'm a good man. Somebody say I'm a good woman. Okay, okay. Some of you are the wife of somebody's dreams. Some of you are the husband of a woman's dreams. You're a future great husband, future great wife. Not only are you beauty and motion, you are intelligence wrapped in a box called Discover Me. But there's one thing that God has against you. Your finances are not in order. Financial literacy is numero uno. When you get your finances in check, everything else is a wrap. What we want to do is dive in and show you how you have millions in your budget. Somebody say, I got millions in my budget. And it's tough to believe if you've been struggling for a long time. And I get it and I understand it. But there's always fat in the budget. Now, we had some homework last week. If you're watching online, if you watched our last video, we had some homework last week. Our homework was to find out how much money you spent in the month of March. Break out your papers. I know it's going to be difficult for those watching online. Break out your papers. You've got a pen at your table. Let's start at the top. This is not you looking at what your neighbor is putting down unless you're a couple. Let's be honest. We're going to do a real quick exercise. Everything on this paper is tied to the millions that you're missing. I'm not saying that you always have to penny pitch. What I'm telling you is that the mismanagement of your funds is the degradation of the lost interest that you're make, not making. So money is not growing, wealth is not accumulating, and therefore you're frustrating asking your employer or asking your customers or your clients for more money, but it's actually on the inside of your budget. 70% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck. Actually, 78%. Now, let me break it down. Of those who make over six figures, that's $100,000 or more, 50% live paycheck to paycheck. But you mad because you're not making six figures. The average millionaire never made six figures. Only 31, this is a study, over 10,000 millionaires. I'm going to give you some quick stats. We're going to really dive in because I got my partner in crime, and when I punch you, then he's going to kick you. I'm just joking, just joking, just joking. It ain't that bad, brother. It's not going to be that bad. We're here to help you. We're, we're here to charge the atmosphere and enlighten you. 78% of people are living paycheck to paycheck. 50% of those making six figures are living paycheck to paycheck. Watch this. Those who make a quarter of a million, $250,000 or more, 25% of them live paycheck to paycheck. We work for both City Mortgage, City Bank. I work for so many different banks. Listen, Morgan Stanley, you name it, and mortgage companies, I have seen from millionaire to millionaire actually end up in debt, in trouble with the IRS, or not accessing the fullness of what they could have made through their interests. Somebody say E3. E3. So this is why we're going to look at your paper. There's three ways people learn. I learned this from teachers years ago. You either learn with your eyes, your ears, or your effort. Somebody say, my eyes, my, eyes. my ears, or my effort. 
your eyes, you can see the PowerPoint. If you're watching online, you can see me or you can see snippets of the PowerPoint. So you can see it with your eyes. Some of you, raise, raise your hand if you're a visual learner, or you can also type it in the comments. You're, okay, visual learners. Raise your hand if you're an audio learner. Like, if you hear it, you got it. My wife is like that. Few, okay. And then raise your hand if you like to actually do it. Once you do it, you got it. That's what I'm talking about. So tonight we're going to do it. So I need you to write it down. What should your tithes be? And I'm saying what should your tithes be because I'm sensing that everybody's not paying their tithes because you're actually giving God what's left rather than what's first. Oh, I, I'm not here to rebuke you. I just, I'm just talking about the text. Malachi 3 and 10. Like, this is Bible study. Where is the scripture? Romans 13 and 8. Oh, man, oh, oh uh, no man nothing but to love him. Proverbs 13 and 22, a good man or woman leaves an inheritance to his or her children's children. So the older you is counting on the younger you to grow up, pull up your adulting big boy or big girl pants and actually budget now so your children can eat off the fat. What should your offering be? If tithes are 10%, it's a free will offer. We're going to talk about that once we get to our 50, 30, 20 rule. This is just a quick review. What, should your, what is your mortgage or your rent? What's the escrow? So now, some of you have it all tied in. That means it's your P&I, your principal and interest payment, plus your escrow payment, which is your taxes, and your home insurance is actually tied into that. I need you to write down everything. If you don't ever confront the giant that you're dealing with, then you are never going to have what you really say you believe God for. Faith without works is being alone. Gas, we've got utilities, we've got mobile phone. We, listen, we got medicine, hair, nails. Hair and nails, oh my. Hair and nails. We got shoes. Listen, I was counting the shoes, you know, I've tried to downsize a little bit. I know if in the closet alone, I've got 30 pairs of shoes or so. How, how many of you all have 50 pair or more of shoes? You can type it in the comment as well. Let's be, come on, be honest. How many, ladies, I wish y'all would, ladies, don't make me prophesy. How many of you all have 50 pair of shoes or more? I used to have that. Anybody else? Uh-huh. How many have 30 or more pair of shoes? Raise your hand. How many have 20 or more? I'm talking about in all your closet. Some of y'all lying. Okay. How many of you have 10 pair of shoes or more? Raise your hand. Come on. Let's be honest. Absolutely. You got a, you, you got a pair of shoes to go with every other dress or outfit, even if you never wore it. But you're convinced because you see that red sign that says sales, but you never really look at the sale. You just buying it anyway. Anyways, we're going to keep moving here. Subscriptions, credit cards, loans, so on and so forth. We want to dig in. By the time you leave here tonight, you're going to listen. If you're watching online, I need you to take a sheet. Now, some of you all can do it in a spreadsheet. You can do it in a budget. Dave Ramsey calls it everyday dollar. You can do it in a rocket budget. You can do it in a crown financial. There are a litany of, uh, of resources in, on the paper that you actually have to do it if you like the Excel sheet. But we're going to go old school tonight. Effort. We want you to actually write it down. Now, some of y'all like scribbling in because you don't really want somebody to see how much you... And some of you don't even know how much you've actually paid on eating out. Inflation is crazy. We know this. Auto insurance has gone up 22% just within the last year. Within the last month, auto insurance has gone up 3%. Uh, today, the market was on fire. Well, the market was down overall with Dow Jones, S&P, and the NASDAQ. But overall, what was happening is the solar market was on fire because people want to reduce those utilities. Okay. So we're going to dive in. We're going to talk about it all. But this is what we're going to do. We're going to do some fun stuff. Y'all can y'all breathe in? Breathe out. All right, let's do some fun stuff. Let's do a quick review. I have right here, this is called Disruptors Thinkers. Anybody want this? Okay, you got to answer some questions. <laughs> This is the essential planner. This goes with the book, Disruptive Thinking. Everything must be disruptive. And it's great to have the book because we're going to soak that information in, but we want you to actually have this to use it for your effort. Now, you got to yell this out really quick. Um, so we, we, we got a few moderators. We got, we, we got our administrative crew in the end. Y'all ready? Who was the instructor or instructors of finance and wealth in week one? She yelled it out really quick. Y'all got to be quick. Who was the second person that said that really quick? 
We're going to listen, if you don't stand up, these sisters are going to tackle you, brother. What is the 50, 30, 20 budget calculator and which number is the most important? It sounds like the Tower of Babel. I'm going to take a hand here really quick. Can you also put the microphone there cause, so she can hear it online? You had your hand first? That's a little deceptive. I'm just seeing your hand now, but I get it. No. We'll come back. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I think if I remember correctly, 50% is like your expenses, 30% is yourself, and 20% is savings and investing. And 20% is most important because it'll get you out of debt. Give her the disruptive thinker essential planner. <laughs> What's the most important? He said the most important is the 20. That's what you saved. Done deal. Let's give it up. You redeemed yourself. Really quick, when you get paid, what should you do first? Oh, we. Oh, we. Oh, we. This is, first of all, all of you all are right. I heard it, I heard it here really quick, and then I also heard it here. It's, it's pay yourself, as you said, but you also said tithe. So maybe it's a little deceptive. Now, this model is based upon your paycheck. Once you automate this, boom, that 20% is automatically going towards your savings and investment. Now, then what you get, when you get your other info, then you can do it. Now, if we, if we can start setting this up, Mr. Dyer, where we can actually have this auto-drafted uh, for Todd, I'll leave it alone. Uh, okay, we, we can do that? Okay. Be because this is, let, let, me, let me give you a 30-second version. I look back, and um, my wife and I, we weren't making at that time, we weren't making two hundred and fifty or three hundred thousand dollars a year. But I looked, and our tides reflected that, because we used to tide not only ten percent, but automatically I would budget fifteen percent in tides, automatic boom boom, because I was believing God for the increase. So some of you, you're in trouble because you're not sowing where you're going, and sometimes you have to sow, and then God will. Uh, Y'all going to make me preach. Then there will be a quantum leap of catatronic, cataclysmic manifestation towards your goal when you are believing God and when you put him first that way. Okay. Next one really quick. Uh, did I miss anything? Oh, should we tie it off of gross or net? Gross. Now, let me say this. I'm not trying to beat you up if you've been tying off net. The, the key is... If my paycheck says two, if I know I get two thousand dollars every two weeks, two hundred dollars is automatically going that way, and then I know I can give a free will offering. That might be fifty. That might be a hundred. It just depends. Jesus says, "Give unto Caesar what's what's due unto Caesar." It, it's super simple. We, because listen, FICA, Medicare, everybody else, taxes, IRS—they're not gonna wait and say, "What do you have left to pay us?" No, they're gonna get it right now. Okay, how? Did I, did I answer? Okay. How many months of emergency funds should you save to cover? I heard her. She said three to six months. And then I think I heard somebody over here. I don't know who it was. Y'all had to help me out. I don't want to get beat up tonight. Next question. Now, if you're watching this online, we're going through a compilation of the teaching for the first two weeks, but we're going to dive deeper really quick because I want to make sure that I tag team with my, with my partner here. We talked about millionaires. Do all millionaires make six figures? She said no, and then I heard a no over here. So let's go no and no. <laughs> now these tables over here, y'all, 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 you guys have been a little quiet. Online, feel free to type it in the chat. We might be able to correspond with you. If your credit, if your credit score is high, will your interest rate be high or low? I heard low. I heard the first two lows right over here. Last few questions. What 
is the minimum credit score to receive a FHA loan? I heard 580 here, and I heard 580 here. Oh, she already had one, so let's go right over here. So let's go here and here. Okay. When creditors call you, what should you do? She said, answer the phone, answer the phone. Lord. <laughs> Y'all were a tie. You can have mine. Please give this to your wife. You can have mine. She said, how many books can you win? We only got a few more books left. What is the number one wealth destroyer? Well, we'll, we'll hold that one to the end. Actually, we'll hold the last two to the end. <laughs> Let me say this be before I get in trouble. This is not legal advice. We just want to help you. There are absolutely no motives here. I don't know any church that in the country that has taken their Bible study, broke it down into five different groups to hands-on mentor and teach you everything else we know. I'm telling you, if I don't know, somebody in the room knows. If somebody in the room doesn't know, I will find out. If I need to call Bishop, if we need to get with John Hope Brown, whoever, I'm telling you, this is your most important course on financial literacy. So this informational purposes. We're going to talk about bills, and then boom, boom, Dr. Dyer, you want to come tag team on this? Because we're talking about living life on the edge, one bill well, at well a time. First, first off, you call them bills. I know them quite well. I call them Williams. Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. It was important to get rid of them. So. Okay. Ooh. Thank you, Would you guys get up for Mr. Frank Dyer? We'll tag team back and forth. He's going to take this session, and then I'll be back to take us right, further. Tag, you're in. I'm, I'm in now. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. How's everybody doing? Yeah. Fantastic. I'm glad to see you guys enjoyed it, everything. I missed you last week. Everybody was hitting me up on social media. And they're like, where are you? I'm like, ah, my bad. I'm in Hawaii. <laughs> so, I know, sorry. I know, rub it in. But no, no, I was doing work. I was doing work. We're, we're, one of the things we're doing, you know, I'll go off on a tangent in a minute. One of the things we're doing is helping rebuild Lahaina as a church. So we're, we're partnering with three churches there, and we're helping to rebuild that city. Uh, so we did a lot of work. You guys will see it in the reels here soon. But uh, it was absolutely amazing the little time I was there. All right. Living life on the edge, one bill at a time. Does anyone know what the number one wealth destroyer is? It's the cars. We, we talked about that just the other day. Now you know the answer to the question, right? You know, sometimes, in this case, what is that? That's uh, probably an MX5 or something. Uh, major, major problem with cars. What do you do about that? What do you do about it? That would, be, that would be good. The cars are the number one thing in the dealerships. They take full advantage of you. So what I'll tell you is a couple of different ways we can do this. When you're financing a new car, if you don't pay cash, which is actually an ideal way to do it, go to the bank or the credit union for financing look at the best rates you could find. You know, we talked about a couple of things. We talked about credit score briefly the other day. Credit score impacts your life in so many different ways it ain't even funny. It impacts your cars, it impacts your insurance, it impacts everything. So when those, those bill collectors or those people about those Williams do call you, definitely answer the phone. Uh, car dealerships make money on the financing hands down. You'll notice that they always do that. So whenever I try to buy something, when I my daughter's car, before I paid it off, I got my stuff through USA, which is the military credit union or bank. Financing a new car, this is the key, the depreciation. When you first drive it off the lot, you're losing 15 to 20% right off the top, no matter what it is, right off the top. So you got to give thought to that. 40% over three years. So ideally, that, that's, the, that's the key number right there, 40% over three years. The key is, is, is buy a certified pre-owned car three years or older, bingo. You get the best deal in the world. Yeah, yeah, get a hand clap on that one. I know everybody wants to get the feeling of what it feels like to buy a new car. It feels the same because the other one's going to be new to you too. Don't even worry about it. 30,000 miles or less, buying a new car or buying a pre-owned car is definitely the way to go. Again, I know people want to get a feel for a new car. I get that. I'm not mad at all. I've had one in my life. It was a Volkswagen Jetta in 1988. Uh, they don't make them like that anymore. I'll leave it alone. 
If you're going to get it, this is what you do. Follow the 23-8 rule, another one of these rules that we have. You may see this on an exam next week. Put down. <laughs> if you're going to put money down, I'm not always a proponent for putting money down. It really depends on the cost of the car. I'm a weirdo. I'm a I won't say a weirdo. Let me not say that. I am peculiar about my payments. I like them to be even numbers. I will put enough money down to make sure that my payment is even. That, I know that's kind of peculiar, but that is what it is. Put down 20% on the car. Finance a loan no more than three years, ideally. There are people out there now, because cars are so daggum expensive, they're actually financing cars for eight and nine years now. And I, honestly, you think about it, uh, cars are almost a disposable item now. I hate to say it like that, but you can replace them sometimes easier than you could fix it. And that's something you've got to really think about. The killer here, though, look at this last bullet point. Monthly payments should be no more than 8% of your income. Calculate that number. Think about that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's huge. The last payment I had was 317 a month. <laughs> that tells you how long ago it was. Uh, that could not happen now because that same car is probably three times the price. I don't know what a jet is now. It's probably $35,000. I think I paid $13,000 in my car with student credit. Um, some of the numbers that uh, my colleague just shared with us. In 2023, 78% of Americans are living paycheck to paycheck. For, for many, income does not even cover standard expenses. You guys just heard him talk about John uh, O'Brien. I took a couple, he was on CNBC today, and I took a couple of notes, and I thought y'all would get a kick out of this. We, we talked about credit score and how it impacts everything. It also impacts your health. Think about this. Our communities are hard. If you're living in a, in a 580 credit score neighborhood, think about that, some of the areas in, in Dallas, your, your, your average life expectancy is 61 to 66 years. Think about that. When I went through this process that we talked about last, well, two weeks ago now, one of the things the guy said, where you're living just gave you another 12 years in your life. I never would have thought about that. Traditionally, you'll see in a 700 credit score neighborhood, people are living on an average age of 81 years. All right? Some of the things you see in those, those 580 credit scores, neighborhoods, and we've all driven through them, we understand. You see rent-to-own stores. You see check cashing places. You see title lenders. Liquor stores of the L, there it is. Pawn shops, payday loans. Uh, and every now and then you see a church. That's the, the, the therapy for that period of time. People go to church on Sundays and Wednesdays and get a little therapy and keep it going. All right, let's keep it moving. What steps can you take to increase your income? This is something that I was going to let my colleague jump on if you wanted to, brother. Um, there's a couple of different things. I know how many people here have a second job right now? I ain't mad at you. I had three at one time. I went through a divorce. I actually was, I taught at Tarrant County College, and I worked at Cowboy Stadium, and I worked for the bank. I worked for, I think it was the Bank of America at the time. You got to do what you got to do. How did you sleep, you know? man? Huh? I didn't. I swear <laughs> to God, I didn't sleep. I was so tired and ridiculous. But but I'm going to tell you, you've got to do what you've got to do to get ahead. Because if you don't, you're never going to catch up. You're never going to get where you want to be. And I'm going to tell you, one of, one of the things we talked about last, again, two weeks ago, is the D words, d well, three Ds, death, divorce, and depression. I went through all of those at one time, and that divorce put me on my bottom. At the end of the day, I had to pay for the house that they were in, the apartment I was in, and also pay child support at the same time. I think I walked away with $100 a month to live on. It was absolutely insane. But, but all it is is God gives it to you. You have to take a step back to make a comeback. And at this point, I'm making a comeback and I'm able to teach people some of the things that we're doing. And at the end of the day, that's what it's all about. So with that, tag, you in. Hi-ya. First of all, we've given you a litany of information that is actually on your table. We've listed at least 25 ways you can make extra income, whether it's drop shipping, babysitting, <laughs> Uh, but the first thing I really want you to do is dig into your budget because there's fat in your budget. You can actually give yourself an extra $500 by reducing how you eat out. You can actually give yourself an extra $100 or $200 by reducing the subscriptions. How many military vets do we have in? Make some noise. Can we give it up for those who have served our country? How many teachers do we have? Can we give it up for all our teachers? Come on. How many medical care workers, health care workers, come on, can we give it up? 
I'm listing this because what you're not realizing is we're not taking advantage of all the benefits. There are VA loans for veterans. There are different discounts that you can get both through your cell phone. And I'm and for some people, I know this seems like, oh, like is this it, this is a humility low portion. I'm not trying to tell you you got a penny pitch on everything, but are you taking advantage of the full discounts that are before you? You can ask whoever you're paying if there's a discount for a teacher, a healthcare worker, a military vet, et cetera. If I set this up to come out um, biweekly, what happens now? For those who don't know, we talked about the accelerated program, which are biweekly payments. What this simply means is if your payment is $2,000 or more each month on your mortgage, all you have to do is call your mortgage company and ask them, can you get on the accelerated program? Can you pay $1,000 every 14 days? It's the same money. It's the same money. Does that make sense to you guys? Yeah. It's the same money. Now, what you're doing is you're paying $2,000 within 28 days, but every 14 days, you're actually attacking the principal as well as the interest. It takes your mortgage from 30 years to 22 years and eight months. Yep. Would you like that? Yeah. Okay, it also takes a 15-year mortgage from 15 years till about 12 years, three months. But if you tweak it a little bit with an extra payment, you can do 11 years in eight months. These are automatic blessings that are at your disposal. Let's keep going because what we uh, want to... Let me jump in yeah, here. I absolutely. Real quick. Please. So, so I have a question, and, it don't, don't, and it's okay to raise your hand. I'm not going to ask you. How many people here are 50 or above? Okay, so let me tell you what I did. And I'm going to tell you, I was in denial for a long time. One of the discounts he talked about, teacher discount, yep, military discount, yep. AARP, all day, every day. <laughs> listen, okay, so, so. Come listen, on, 50 plus club. Listen, people are in denial about that. So I was in denial for a long time, and obviously I'm not going to another club now. But I, I, it came in the mail, and my wife and I went to go to Austin, and I, and I said, I'll just do it. It's $19 for five years. It's something special. So literally, I go to Embassy Suites, $130 room, made it $89. I paid for it. That doesn't even include all the other discounts. It's worth that. So, again, look at everything. Don't be too proud. Don't, they, they, at work, they will tell you, don't, don't take it to Mr. Frank because Mr. Frank is frugal. I am very frugal, and it works. So, all right, Tag, you back in, brother. No, I love it. I love it. But there are a litany of things you can do, online courses. You can walk a dog. <laughs> there are so many different things that you can be a virtual assistant. You want to find ways to make extra money and put that toward the budget. He just told you he took that hotel payment from 130 to 89 To me, that's $41 of now, $41 that I can put in high-yield savings with a 5.7% interest rate, and that's going to make money time over time. What are you doing with the excess money that you're actually saving? You're going to, or spending, you're going to actually hate to have to dig into your budget if you don't see the reward. The reward is on the flip side of how your money's growing. Does that make sense? Okay, we're going to dig a little bit deeper. While we're digging a little bit deeper, let me just first, for those who are maybe watching for the first time or listening, top three occupations for millionaires, over 10,000 millionaires, the studies show it's either engineers, accountants, and teachers. I know, I know. People are like, teachers, what in the world? First of all, teachers maximize that extra 60 days or so. Now they're trying to tighten it because I know you have to do some summer training. What you do with that summer month is on you. In addition, teachers are having to be disciplined. You're having to pay for Kleenexes and glue and scissors. I get it. I, I know it. I used to be a substitute teacher. So now you get to be frugal. Now, some studies show that teachers are married to la da la lawyers, doctors, et cetera, but teachers are in the top three categories of being a millionaire. The average age of a millionaire is 49 years old, but you're frustrating you're 35. You're frustrating you're 40. You're frustrating you're 45. You have to think on this long-term trajectory of where you're going. Long-term. It's what you do with your money. Okay. Also, there's 70,000 millionaires in the Dallas area alone. Well, that's just Dallas, the city of Dallas. In the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, there are 110,000 millionaires. I know. I know. There were 3.5 more millionaires made over the last several years in the United States. Why not you? Why not you? But it's going to start with the budget. Now let's dig in a little bit. What happens? What's the, what's the consequence of not paying your bills? Late fees. What else? Credit score. What else? Interest. What else? Negative imp stress. Negative impact to bad relationships. Uh, how many of you feel good about somebody you loan money and never paid you back? <laughs> okay. Okay. Then I wonder how these creditors feel. We'll keep moving because I, I, 
you know, y'all love me right now, but we're we going to dig in a little bit. I just wonder, put yourself in their position. Now, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. What should we do to get these bills paid on time? Number one, we got to do what? Got to prioritize. Do you, do you know you get extra discounts for actually automating your bills? Okay. What else are we going to do? We're going to automate these payments. Then we're going to do what? Set reminders. Well, I forgot the water bill was due. No, it's automated. There's no forgetting there. Let's dig in a little bit deeper. Now, what's the difference between due date and due time? If you're the last minute type person and you're paying the bill, should the bill be paid like at 9 p.m. at night, 10 o'clock at night, or should it be paid early on? Because we've seen a lot of, uh, I used to work with so many different people more because they were frustrated. I paid you, Mr. Dobbins. I said, yeah, you paid us, but it was at the ninth hour, so that was credited on the next day. That next day costs you money and interest. You already have a $300,000 uh, home loan, and it's daily simple interest. So then how much do you think that's actually costing you per day? It's just something to think about. Does that make sense? That's money that you could use for your children's children's children. Listen, you want to be so wealthy, you want to be so rich that your children or your grandchildren walk by and kiss your picture when you are dead and gone. My God. It's time out for having funerals whereby we just have to have GoFundMes to bury people. We have, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll come back to that Let portion. me throw one in there for you. Absolutely, Mr. Dye. So, so one of the things he's talking about, too, I think I mentioned this a the couple of weeks ago. With your bills... Take advantage of some of these credit card things. I talked about that. I talked about the, the water bill, things that are necessities that are always there. Put them on your credit card. Get, get to take the points. Take the miles. Do things like that. That will ultimately help you in the end of the day, right? So at the end of the day, you, you want to look at that and take advantage of it. But automation is, is everything. If it, I'm not a big person to automate them out of my, direct out of my checking account. I'm not getting a fib. But what I love to do is do it through bill pay, through bill pay with Bank of America, with Chase. That way it allows you to see what's coming. It, it, you could set reminders for it. They'll send you the alerts that he just talked about. That's the way you make sure that, that you're not impacted on any of your uh, credit scores. Because we talked about what credit score does, right? We talked about the situation I was in. We talked about how it impacts your health, right? And the ability to get out of there to make sure it's under control will ultimately help you more than you could ever imagine. So, tag, you're it. <laughs> Absolutely. So, if... 70% of millionaires never actually made over six figures. Where's the extra money coming from? How are they actually becoming millionaires? They're looking at the long-term goal. What's your long-term goal? On your, pay, on your table, you will see that one of them is, what is your vision? What do you see for yourself? What has God shown you? You'll see mission. Mission is what you're trying to accomplish. Then you'll see goals. What's your daily goal, weekly goals? What's your quarterly goals? That's every three months. What's your six-month goal, year goals? And then your initiatives. If you win big, who will you help? Will it be a homeless shelter? Will it be your church? Will it be extra money to Megacare, the TD Jakes Foundation? Will it be our Tory program? How will you actually take those funds if you don't have a vision for it? So every time you basically eat out and you know you really can't afford it, now let's talk about really can't afford it. Just because you have the money in your bank account does not mean you should spend it. I don't want to insult your intelligence. There are people in here who have a million-dollar net worth and above. But I don't care who you are, everybody can save money in some place. Does that make sense? Okay. We're going to dig in. Let's, let's, let's go. Blue. What are the benefits of paying the bills on time? Come on, yell it out. Reduce stress. Just bless me. We all get it. Let's keep moving. Budget, budget, budget. Now, in front of you, now I know some of you have been afraid to actually write. How many of you all have written at least 10 bills down since you've been here? So the rest are afraid. The number one reason, I remember years ago, it's almost 20 years ago, I was at City Mortgage. We were struggling like crazy. I said, listen, I need help. I'm too smart to be broke. You're too brilliant. You're too gifted not to have extra money in your pocket. You are anointed, you're called, you're chosen like never before. I told you, your beauty and most of you are mogul in the making. You are intelligence on steroids. But the issue is you keep making excuses. But the number one reason in your excuse is that you are in denial. I work for Morgan Stanley, work for City Morgan City. I can, I, I can list a litany of banks. The number one reason people were in debt is because they were in denial. You thought you had the money to spend. Oh, 
budget. We're going to dig in. We're going to tag team together. But we want you to listen to something. Does anyone know who this is? Budget Easter. Somebody say that with me. Budget Easter, baby. Let's dig in and see. Let's listen to what she has to say. Where's your money going? Is it bees? And this is not to beat you down because I get it. Sometimes you're just in a tough situation. You've either had a reduction in income, you're putting kids through college, et cetera, which honestly, that's a lack of planning or not in putting in the 529B plan. Okay, that's or 529 plan. I get it if you're in a tough situation. What does the B stand for again? Was there a U in there? What's U stand for? Usage, utilities. Usage, utilities that fluctuate. What did the C stand for? Choice or cash. Are we making choices that are actually going to put us in long-term trouble? I learned a long time ago by this great, amazing preacher and leader. Don't make permanent decisions over temporary circumstances. Oh, we almost there. We're going to dig in a little bit deeper. So, quick review. B is for what? U is for what? And C is for? Now, let's dig on in because we want to take you somewhere. 50, 30, 20. Now, here's a great debate. Where does my ties go? First off, the 30% is your want category. 50%, that's your utilities. You know, well, your utilities or your needs, you know you actually have to take that 50%. Now, here's the key. Many people are living off 100% of their income as opposed to half. I know people that live off of 10% because they have lived within their means. You're making excuses because you're bringing in money, but you don't understand where it's going because you're in denial because you're not looking at how much you actually spent. Your homework last week was to find out how much money you spent in the month of March, and I can see your faces by some of you have not actually faced that, devil or giant. It's a spirit. The devil is a lie. Girl, we're going we gonna to have money. Yes, we are, and we're going to be accountable. Why do we skip over the, steward, the good steward part of the text? Oh, I'm sorry. The 30%. The 30% are your wants. I want to tie to my church. I want to give a free will offering. So if I say, you know what, 15% is automatically going to my church, that means other 15% is my wants. 20% has already gone to my savings. Does that make sense? Super simple. Now, if you've got a 401k, automatically that's tax deferred. There are a lot of different benefits. Let's dig a little further because we want to get you to where you're actually making money in a brokerage account. What's this right here? Needs, 50%. Now, it says don't forget about health care. For most of us, that automatically comes out. Okay. If you're honest, you can say, I cannot live without it or if it's a definite need. Now, I don't know, Mr. Dyer. Sometimes I look at something. You know, I drive a couple of old cars, and uh, I've been eyeing a few things lately. <laughs> Whew, and it's tough. Let me just be honest. It's tough. It's tough. I see some nice Bentleys on sale. Mercy. Oh, God. Oh, I see some nice suits. Oh, God. Mm, I've seen some nice Rolex to watch. Oh. But sometimes you have to ask yourself, wait a minute, self. Somebody say self. self. Wait 24 hours. <laughs> emotional spending. Yes. Money is emotional because there are emotional beings tied to it. Ask yourself those questions. 30%, we talked about that. 30% is your wants. Now, what's within that? Obviously, your ties and offering, your leisure activities, your vacations, etc. We have been blessed. Uh, my bride is in the room somewhere. We Sometimes she, she'll be scared to tell me where she wants to go because as soon as, as, soon as she tells me, I'm going to book it for later down the line because I'm trying to get it on a discount. I'm trying to work it within my means. No, I'm serious. I'm serious. So, therefore, when we get to a London or a Paris, you like, I'm like, no, we're staying here. We're staying here. Somebody, raise your hand if you like five star. Oh, yes. I know you do. I know you do. Raise your hand if you like nice things. Come on. Diamonds, pearls. Jewel, come on. There's nothing wrong with having nice things. You just need to put it in the budget. That's it. Does that make sense? Yes, That's it. If I'm going to Hilton Head, I can budget for Hilton Head because it's coming ahead. If I'm going to Carmel or 
Beach or if I'm going to Pebble Beach, I can budget in ahead. If I'm going to New York or Martha's Vineyard, I can budget ahead. Are you budgeting ahead or are you just emotional? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to take this trip right now. Several thousand dollars later when you look at the bill or the money that you lost. Because for some of you, it's that in-between portion. You're not just starving on the streets, but then you're not just balling out with millions in your pocket. Or if you do, you have to ta tap into it early and it'll cost you. So you're in that in-between. What do you do in the in-between time? You budget. Let's keep moving. Savings or debt. There's no sense if you save, is it saving if you have debt. Now, I don't want to tell you how to do this, but I think you can juggle in between both. Number one, you should pay your bills. Number one, you can negotiate. Most creditors will take, how much did I articulate last week? Half, 50%. Come on, for those of you who know you're 180 days or 120 days past due, you, I'm not, well, you don't have to raise your hand. Let me just put it down. <laughs> no, let me tell you something that, that the banks will not tell you. I worked a mortgage for a litany of years. If we, have a if we had a loan that was over 180 days past due, we had to write it off because it's now considered a non-performing loan. This is why after 90 days, halfway to the 180-day mark, which is three payments, which means the 91st day, you're going to be four months past due, we're going to send you a default letter to say you defaulted on this mortgage legally, and now we can pursue foreclosure as soon as possible. Now, there are quick states. Now, I'm going to flip through this real quick. You, you've got Georgia. You've got Michigan. You've got Virginia. You've got quick states. So within 30 to 45 days, you can have a foreclosure sale after the 90 days which means 120, 150 days, you can have a foreclosure. Now you get to Ohio, you get to Kansas, you get to New York City, you get to New Jersey. Then it'll take 12 months, 13 months, some Ohio, Cuyahoga County. It'll take 18 months to foreclose on the property. But many people, while they were in foreclosure, kept bawling out, and they never adjusted their budget. And so when they had to speak to me or my team, then I'm like, what were you doing with the money? We were just scared. We were running. I was like, you could have actually been saving that money to put some type of down payment on it to help. There are programs, I, I don't know, I'm just sensing something in my gut. Somebody in this room is in real financial trouble. See, you're coming in, we're having fun, but the person next to you could be in bankruptcy, foreclosure. It's a bankruptcy 13, it's a bankruptcy 7. I'm telling you, I sense it in my gut. I know it. I'm not trying to call you out. I'm here to help you. We are here to walk with you step by step. There are programs, there are modifications. Modification is in, am I going too fast? I'm, I'm getting excited. A modification is in what we call an AOT, adjustment of terms. This means that the arm loan you signed up for, the teaser weight with the interest only loan you signed up for can be adjusted to help you. But if you don't answer the phone, you're losing money. If you answer the phone, it's going to be, I know, you don't want them to know your name. You don't want them to really know what's going on. But listen, they know your credit report anyway. Okay. I don't know how we got there, but. Foreclosure rate in Texas, with almost any bank, 90 days are going to send you a default letter, but Texas normally is about 150 to 180 days. They're trying to beat the 180 days. Now, here's what happens. Some of you, I'm just, you might be watching online. Whether you're watching online or in the room, if you have a mortgage that's past six months past due, the reason they have not foreclosed on you is there's something going on legally or, there, or there's an issue with the title. And so this is information that you don't know. People are a year past due, and they're still scared. Well, they don't know what's going on, but they don't know. We're trying to partner with an attorney firm to actually find out a way to get you to sign something that was not signed at closing. That was. See, these are all the mistakes that you don't know. You ever see, just a brief tangent, you ever see properties in particular neighborhoods, you're like, how is that home there for so long? You know it's dilapidated. You know windows are broken down. There's a title issue. Or it's no equity. So if the property uh, is worth 300000 but the person actually owes 400000 the bank is not going to foreclose because they know automatically they're going to lose $100,000. So the bank doesn't want your home. They want to get you in a program to get you to pay so they don't have to lose $100,000. I was the guy 20 years ago teaching realtors how to do short sales. A short sale is whereby you sell the property for less than what it's, what it's actually owed. Let's take the same scenario. They owe $500,000, but the property is only worth $300,000. I would teach the realtor, listen, take the offer. We'll take the $300,000, and we will find a way to write the other $200,000 off. But because you're scared and you're not answering the phone, you don't know that you could have actually been helped. 
Okay, I don't know. It's just it's something in my gut. Let's 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 continue to move, and we're gonna rock and roll with some questions. Brokerage accounts. Here, Here we, we go. go. Here we go. Tag, you're Tag, it. Tag, you're it. Let's get it. All right. So how many how many folks in here today have a brokerage account right now? How many of you are investing the way you should in a brokerage account and not just putting? All right. That's ah, less hands. Okay. That's a good thing. No, it's, having it is the big first step, right? So having that. So one of the things I talk about in my mind, my admin will not let me talk about it, but I'm going to say it anyway. As you move forward, one of the first things you do is an emergency fund, right? Make sure you maximize your 401k at work if you have one. If not, you set up your broker, your a Roth IRA at a, at a firm as well. But a brokerage account in this case, it could be a brokerage account, it could be a Roth IRA. We're going to talk about what that looks like. So what is a brokerage account? Can someone tell me what that is first and foremost? Everybody don't respond at one time. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It, it can definitely make money for you, but let me just bring it down like this. It's an investment account that allows you to do a couple of different things. It allows you to buy and sell a variety of investments, including stocks, including mutual funds. You can do options out of it, et cetera. We talked about automation before. We talked about being consistent with when we uh, invest. Being consistent to me means that you're actually investing every single month. Every single month, I, what do I put in there now? I think it's 600 bucks, and it goes to three different mutual funds, 200 in each one of them, every single month, right? Uh, that's consistency. Does anyone know what a mutual fund is? What you got? Come on. You're exactly right. You can come see me. All right, you come see me. We'll take care of you. All right, my God. Tammy, Tamara, please, if you would, in a second. All right. I know. I'm like, whoa, wait a minute now. I want to roll, sister. Let me roll. All right, so let's look at this again. Mutual funds, a diversified portfolio of stocks, bonds, and other assets. One of the things that people like to do is they always talk about buying stocks, right? They want to buy stocks. At the end of the day, since we're not buying thousands of shares, the best way to approach that is doing mutual funds. What it's going to do for you, it invests in many different stocks and it lessens your negative impact at the end of the day. If the stock goes down, if the market goes down, you don't, you're not hit nearly as hard. Does anyone know what ETFs are? Is there one? ETFs. I thought there was one. That's okay. You were close anyway. <laughs> but the, uh, our ETFs are exchange trade fund. Yes, exactly. And it's basically a pool of money from multiple investors that, that end up investing and doing certain things as well. So brokerage accounts. How many people have brokerage accounts with Fidelity or Vanguard? That's okay. Very good. There's a couple of them. Charles Schwab is one. Fidelity Investments. Vanguard. Edward Jones as well as one. Yes. Robinhood. You can use that as well. There's a couple of them out there. Uh, Meritrade is another one that people use. The key, the key, the key in identifying a brokerage fir a firm, I say firm or account, is actually looking at the firm and understanding that they have and that they can do what you need it to do. Traditionally, what people will do is they'll buy mutual funds, they'll buy shares of stock. One of the things, and I, I give these examples over and over again because it makes sense. With my daughter, the Udma account that I opened when she was born, when I worked at Fidelity Investments, we opened it up. I think I told you, I bought Disney at $26 a share. I bought Coca-Cola at less than $50 a share. I bought Costco at less than $40 a share. Costco is $800 a share right now. So you, you, the key here with these accounts, when, when you, I'd say it's a mix of things. They're primarily those, but when they were giving them birthday money and Christmas money, I would go and do those, as well as investing in, in, a, in mutual funds. Ten steps to open a brokerage account. Here we go. For those who don't know, here we go. It's straightforward, and it's so funny because he's actually gone now. One of the uh, pastors that was here, Pastor Tubman and I were at three years ago. We were working on one, and I, he and Pastor Dobbs and I were at where were we at Cheesecake Factory uh, at Consecration at uh, not Consecration at uh, at the convention up in Ohio, and we we talked about it. I literally opened up my Charles Schwab account right there just to show him how to do it, and since that time, we've actually grown quite a bit, surprisingly. First step: choose a brokerage firm. I gave you a couple of them right there. There are others that are out there. Just make sure it's a reputable firm that you know about. Visit the broker's website. It's, it's easy to 
if it's easy for you to navigate it, it's actually not a bad deal. What I would encourage you to do is do two things. I go and I look up and do some research on a mutual fund on a stock. See if you understand it. See if it's going the right way. If it's going the right way, and you can understand what it's talking about. You can look at a mutual fund and see the top 10, fu 10 uh, stocks that it's investing in. That's the way you look at it and make, move it forward. Select the account type. We talked about two different account types so far. There's a couple of them out there, obviously. Um, there's a traditional brokerage account. There's a Roth IRA. There's an IRA. There's an UTMA account. Depending on what it is you're looking to do, right? So different ones for different things. Complete the online application. It's all online, nice and straightforward and to the point. Verify your identity. Some of them don't do that. Some of the smaller ones do, like a Robinhood will probably do that. Fidelity, uh, Vanguard, Schwab may not necessarily do that. Choose the funding method. Traditionally, there's a couple of ways to do it. We talk about uh, automatic transfers, right? I'm really big on the automatic transfer concept. But what they'll do is you'll set up an, a, a way to do that. You'll set it up, and it'll actually fund it by transferring $100 or $50 into the account. That will keep it open. You have about, six, six, depending on the firm, you have 60 to 90 days to fund it. And once you've done that, you, it starts the process. So traditionally, what you'll do is they'll put the money in just a traditional savings account for now within your brokerage account. Then you can direct that money wherever you want to direct it. You can put it there, then direct it in the mutual fund. If you want to buy stocks, et cetera, et cetera. An uh, example of, I said my wife, what did she buy? We bought uh, Facebook. What is that? Meta. I couldn't think of the, of the acronym for it anymore. Meta at $160 a share, which I thought was super expensive, and now it's knocking at about $580. And I think so. I'm like, yes, yeah, it's, it's, it's insane. Because of you got to think about what people are using every single day, what you see every single day. We always talk about penny stock this, penny stock that. Do you realize how much a penny stock has to go up to make some money? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes, yeah, that part. I, I, I get it, and it's a way to f get that first step in and get your feet wet, but l let's, let's look at stuff that people really use. If you look at those things, it'll make a huge difference in you, your portfolio, and creating a generational wealth. Agree to the terms, pretty straightforward. Once you submit the application, you'll see that it's live. It's usually pretty forward, pretty, pretty quick, pretty straightforward, and you'll be able to do that. And when you're funding the account, EA Teamwork, yes, I love that one. That must be a Dobbin thing. <laughs> I think at the end of the day, that is probably the biggest and the easiest way to do anything when it comes to a brokerage account. We're going to talk about a couple of different things, right, as far as ways to invest in the account, what to do, and what are the games plans we're going to do for next week is actually look at two or three different mutual funds and literally break those mutual funds down so you can get a feel of what's in them and what we would potentially choose and why we would actually choose those. And what I'll probably do is take some of the ones that I'm investing now for myself, and then for my, my daughter and for her, because she still has two. Uh, but there's a different view on it, right? So what, one of the things you've got to really assess for yourself is your risk tolerance, right? What is it? it depends on where you are in your life. It depends on your age and the approach that you actually take. But risk tolerance is everything. As I'm getting closer to the retirement time, thank you, Jesus, uh, I, I'm, I'm, I'm less risky. Well, there was one point you couldn't tell me nothing. I was the riskiest person out there on any and everything I could find just trying to maximize my return. Uh, but now, I, I don't, I, I'm a little bit more conservative, but I'm just still much more risque than uh, my, my wife is. So, where you at? Come on. All right. So, with that in mind, what we want to do now, I think, unless you have something to add to that. Yes, we're going to dive in with questions. But before we do that, what, first of all, what Mr. Dye is telling you is numero uno is crucial. That's why we started out with bills and we talked about budget, and then now we're upgrading to brokerage accounts. Your assignment, you've got homework. Come on. If you're watching online, your assignment is to save $100 within seven days. Y'all like, oh, that's easy, that's well, easy. Well, and if it's easy for you, we're going to go $200. <laughs> All right, there you go. <laughs> yeah, 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 I know how to work that thing, see? <laughs> now, and I want to be fair to everybody in the room, for somebody yeah. say, it's tough, yeah. make it 50 for yeah. somebody else, it might be $35. The Here's what I'm saying. The key is a start. The key is a start. The, the, what, what I want, at the end of the day, right, so one of the things I want to do is provoke thought, right? That's what I want to do with this class is provoke thought. But also in the provoking thought, we want to provoke action. So I want people to start taking action on something that we've talked about. I've had a couple of people walk up to me and tell me they've opened up a, a high-yield savings account. 
and they've already started to fund those high yield savings accounts. Um, you know, if you look at, and this is an example I talk about all the time. At the end of the day, if you have money, how many people have money in your banking savings account? Okay. You have a high yield as well. The, the key for banks, again, this is coming from an old banker, at the end of the day, banks are transactional necessarily that, to do things. They're not for saving money. You keep money in there, you keep enough money in a bank to keep from getting fees, okay? M banks make money off of fees, period, point blank. In many cases, they also have, they're connected to a brokerage firm. I'll use Bank of America, for example, they have Merrill Lynch. We were talking about that just a little earlier. With Merrill Lynch, you can open up a Merrill Lynch Edge account through Bank of America. They have a high yield money market account that's paying 5.14% interest right now, which is actually really good because the, the Merrill Bank of America is paying 0.01% interest. So with a $25,000 investment, every year you'll make $9 for the year. Think about that. Yeah, that's absolutely terrible. So I would encourage you to look at that. You still have access to your money because I know I know how we roll. I know we, they, they ain't gonna hack my money. I ain't gonna be able to get to my money. That is so not true. That is so illegal. You will own that bank if they try that. So we, we they were not gonna do that. But let's just think about that. Sorry, go ahead. No, 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 you're good. If you have a question, what I'd like for you to do is we're gonna take at least the first five. If you can meet our moderator, Elder Nicole, right in the middle. Yes. Well, that makes one. <laughs> so we just have one of you left. We'll have one left. Now, here's what I'd like to say. Uh, I've been meeting with people all this week. Uh, yesterday and today, I think Tap Bank is doing 5.35%. Now, these are just informational purposes. We don't want to be sued. Uh, there's another bank that's doing 5.27%. If you wait a week or so, it'll be 5.75%. This is... This is a high yield savings account. All you have to do is go to bank. It's on your paper as well. Go to bankrate.com. It's going to show you which high yield savings, which money market account has the highest amount. Uh, your money's just sitting there. Yeah. So if you have $100, 5% on that, it's going to be $5. You get $1,000, obviously it's going to go up to 50 and so on and so forth. Here's, here's a couple more things that I want to tell you as well. The average with NASDAQ, or excuse me, S&P 500, was 15.34% over the last five years. Yep. So your money sitting in a bank account as opposed to being in a mutual fund is not really benefiting you. Not at all. Uh, you, know, you always talk about you're making your money work while you sleep. This is a way to make that happen, right? It's sitting there and we're doing that. So that, that's the most important piece. When, when we look at doing, that's right here. It, when we look at doing um, the brokerage accounts and so forth and where to put the money in those accounts and leveraging high yield money market accounts, that's the key to everything. Make your money work. Make your money work for you. Ready for questions? Can I ask you a question? Uh-oh. Absolutely. Oh. Test, test. I think the, the question, we, we'll do a book giveaway here really quick. Can anyone explain the 2038 rule? 20. 238 rule. I'm sorry. If you would run to the microphone yes. so they can hear you, see you, please. Come over here, please. All right. 238 rule. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, no, no. Oh, okay. Um, 20. You put 20 percent. If, if you could come this way so that they can see you online. There we go. Right over there. Excellent. Okay. 20 percent down. Um, get the loan for no more than three years and no more than 8% of your income. Excellent. Y'all give her a hand. Yeah, thank you. Excellent. Question? Uh, if you are a W-2 uh, 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 employee, uh, my understanding is two years uh, of employment, you have to verify to buy a house. What if you are 1099 employee? How many uh, years uh, do you have to provide to the bank to get that money? You know. I think it all depends. Here's, here's what's key. You, you really have a broken a realtor who, <laughs> in front of you, but here's what's key. I used to manage underwriting. You want to provide the last three to five years if they really dig in. 
they'll look at a teaser for what you've done the last one or two years, but they're going to look at a track record depending on the size of your home. Anything that's a jumbo loan, $766,000 or more, is going to be scrutinized. Anything 760 or less may not be. Uh, we managed so many different types of loans. These were million dollar homes, million and a half uh, homes. Some of them were million dollar second mortgages back in the day, and they were no doc loans. So be careful because sometimes a banker and an underwriter, some banks are trying to actually make money off of you, and they know you really can't afford it. But you're but you're in it too because you want the home and you want to ball out. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it, and you know you really can't afford it. So provide all that information. Next question. I hope that helps. One more quick question. Uh, if uh, you're taking all the questions, if if, if uh, you got approved for like say four hundred thousand, but the the house was only like uh, fifty thousand less, can you do whatever you want with the other fifty uh, and tie well, and tie it into the mortgage? No. What you want to do is Good always question, be though. under. They, if they gave you a four hundred thousand dollar approval. Use that. That is, that, that, is a, that is a trick. That's called trickery. Yeah. Don't let them trick you like that. Yeah. I got approved for so much, too, and I'm like, oh, no, you ain't going to get me today, Satan. I'm not going to let you have me. So I, I cut it back a couple hundred grand, and, I, and I'm fine. I, I think at the end of the day, you, you, we've just got to make really good decisions on it because they will give you that. And they don't care at the end of the day because they know that at the end of the day, if they approve you that thing, and if you can't pay it, they're going to take it back and sell it to somebody else anyway. That's so right. let's make good decisions with it. I ain't mad at you for 400 grand, though. I like that. But, uh, and, well, he, you can do still do extremely well here for that now. No question about that. Really well. Yes. Accept what you need. Stay yes. under your budget. All Live within your means. Okay, I have a mortgage. Uh, the balance is 40000 I'm rent currently renting that place out. Glory to God. Do I sell it? Do I pay the mortgage off? Do I take my equity and run? Um, because I could use it to pay off debt. The dream is to be debt free. Of course. So do, do I sell it or do I keep it, pay it off? Or what? I'll, I'll take a stab at it. It's a great point. You, yeah. you definitely have options. There's no rush to be debt free. When I say there's no rush to be debt free, you're looking long term. Because what you're wanting to do is leverage that. Now, if you sold the property now, obviously you're going to make an amazing amount and you have equity within the property. But you'll be mad six months or a year mo a year from now when you look and see how much the equity has yep. gone up. Yep. If you're in the Dallas Forward area, people are moving here like, in droves. In listen, droves. Like, like everything is on fire everywhere else. We've got 8.6 million people in the Metroplex alone. They're saying with the next 70 to 80 years that Dallas, Austin, and Houston will be larger than New York, Chicago, and L.A. If you can keep the property, keep the property and put the property in a trust and be able to transfer that to your children's children's children. You can go to LegalZoom by doing it. Sorry, I hope that helps. And we can dig deeper into a more specific situation if you needed the money or needed to access some of the money for whatever emergency reason. I don't want to oversimplify. Yes, sir. So, Pastor, you talked about um, the working two to three jobs to try to get out of a hole and, and keep going in. So kind of speaking from the millennial perspective, we know about the grind. You got to grind so hard. Um, what would you say to continuing to building wealth when you are wanting to keep a, quali a certain quality of life, but you also are not wanting to be so spread thin that you can't actually enjoy the, the, the life? So okay. did you, and I'm kind of, kind of two part. So did you, do you keep the mindset of, I got to stay on two or three jobs or whatnot and try to find that balance? Or what moment did you say, okay, all right, I can scale back because I'm losing life. I'm losing time with my children, my well, family. Well, 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 I'll tell you what. So for me, it was a little different. I scaled back because I didn't have to pay child support anymore. <laughs> so that's, glory to God. Uh, uh, oh, just being real. Just being real. So I, I think, you know, but, but I think. That's, that's one of the things, I oh know, right? Sorry. I <laughs> love it. Out. I love it. W one, one of the things, and it's so funny because off of child support, I pay more, and, and I gladly do it because my princess saved my life. Y'all already know that story. I'm going to leave that alone, but I'm glad I did it. Uh, you have to make some adjustments at the end of the day. I mean, everybody wants to have this, this I won't even say a ball in life, this is quality of life. Sometimes you got to make a step back to make a comeback. You know, I, I think the time with your children are invaluable. And you got two little girls. Oh, my God. Listen, I. I you're going to get me going up here. Uh, yes, I, I would scale back a bit to, so you can do what you do. 
I, I think having a, a father present with daughters is probably one of the most important things you could ever do in life. My Jesus. Thank you. I, I just want to add for the men in the room, the more present you are, sometimes the less money you make. So an agreement between you and your spouse is crucial. Yep. When I first started working at this church, my wife knew. I said, babe, give me six months. I'm crazy. They had to stop coming for me coming to the gate at 6 a.m. in the morning. I said, I'm going to work six to six for the first six months. I'm, I'm here. Son, I'm, I'm after something. Get an agreement with your wife as well as your children as well so that you have a long-term plan. Because being at home with not, with not a lot of money in your pocket is not going to make you feel very good as a no, man. not at all. Sisters, not at all. I want to so be honest medium. with you. Yeah. I want to balance it up for yeah. people in the room. Yeah. Hello. Um, I'm a cosmetology teacher, and oh, I don't cool. know what is out there for me. Um, but I do have an IRA at State Farm, and I want to know two things. I want to know if I can move it to mm -hmm. a mu mutual fund, and how do I do that? You want me to get it? You got it. You can definitely do that. All you have to do is call a transfer of assets. You can take it to a IRA. Uh, you can take it an IRA into somewhere else. Sorry, let me put this right here. Uh, and, but then you, once you move it to that IRA, you can invest in mutual funds there. So that's that's the way you do it. And you, they, State Farm should also offer an option for you to invest in mutual funds. If they just got it sitting there, that's they bad, and that's that's a problem because that means they're not telling you everything. And that's yeah. why they look at those those big boys. Exactly. And yeah. I'm gonna tag with Frank really quick. Let's make sure you look at the fees. Transfer. Especially with, well, especially with State Farm, but yes. E yes especially yeah, with yeah, yeah, yeah. whether it's State Farm or any, look at the fees. Also, for those investing in a mutual fund, any type of brokerage account, it's called a prospectus. The money manager, the person that's actually looking over the fund of the account, making sure that it performs, they can show you how it performed six months from now, a year from now, two years, five years from now, so that you pick the best fund. Is Hope that. Wise to keep it there or move it? I would say... Well, this is going to sound kind of biased. I'd say move it because you have more options. The key is options, right? Yeah, yeah follow the money. It, the key is options. I mean, at the end of the day, you can invest in whatever you want to invest in in these different mutual funds. They have mutual funds for everything, for tech, for, for gold and silver, for you name it, they have it. And they, it'll give you the option of having that. So the one more thing I wanted to ask, yes, um, I have a Robin Hood. Someone talked to me about, uh, showed me how to work it. Yeah. But um, all I've been doing is contributing but I don't know exactly what to do with it. <laughs> now I'm you, got on, you got me on that one. <laughs> <laughs> listen, I got, um, listen, I, I bootleg a few things, but I, I kind of mastered some. Part of my story is I would take $10 a paycheck, $20 a paycheck until I could actually afford it. And then I started putting 20 and 100 and so on and so forth. It took $6,000, turned in $60,000. The rest is kind of history because I got a model. It's the same thing. You're sending money to different people on Cash App and so on and so forth. You could actually invest on Cash App as well. Robinhood gives you a deeper aspect. You just need to be able to look at the trend. Don't just look at, oh, I'm going to invest in a stock. Look at the trend. All that information, especially on Robinhood, is there. And it's also going to, in, in Robinhood, Robinhood is going to tell you what the analysts think. The experts are saying 73% yeah, say buy, 27% yeah. say sell. It's going to show you the details. We can walk you step by step with that. And it's all on your phone, by the way. Set your fingertips. He, like, he got me in that one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I got my one free stock, and I got a few things in there. And I think I've done Bitcoin one time to pay for my TV subscription, but that's about it. I'm just. The, let, let me say the 30 second version. I'm a jumper, so if my wife doesn't say, "Hey, babe, let's balance it out," I will jump really quick if I see something going up. But I have an eye for it. Yes, so, but I'm watching it, and I'm also researching it. You got to balance. For those who are married, balance, balance. You can't throw everything there. But this is what we talked about. If it's a if it's a cup of coffee a day that you could actually kill, or. Dr. Pepper, or whatever sweet you're eating every day, and reduce that. That's why I'm saying if you say $5 a day over seven days, that's $35. $10 a day, that's $70. Let's find the fat in the budget so that we can invest it in mutual funds. Yep. Yes, sir. Last yep. question. Sorry. Um, I have like two questions, and I'll go. Come on with um, me. So the first one, so what would you say um, for someone who is making like maybe like less than like two or $1,000 a month, and they're working like 40 hours plus every week, like what would you say, like how can they still save money? First off, you need another job that respects you for who you are. It doesn't, no, I'm, I'm, it doesn't matter where you start. When I moved to Dallas, I was making $10 an hour. $10 an hour is $20,800 a year. Then later, $20 a, 
an hour. That is $40,000 a year. You're worth way more than that. You need to be willing to expand yourself and work hard, especially as a man. I'm speaking to you as a father. I don't care whether if I got to dig a ditch. Listen, I have sacked groceries. I've worked in a counter firm. I've worked in sales. I've managed. You name it. I don't care if I've got to go to West Texas for a few months out of the year and work with my buddies in the oil field or dig ditches. Getting your hands dirty is going to put money in your pocket. Now, it's setting a long-term vision and it's setting a long-term goal. You will not always be there forever. Get another job. Find out. Google. Partner. Somebody in this room knows where he can work. I need everybody in this room who, who has an unction to function before we leave. And we're going to close out in just a moment. If you're watching online, if you know somewhere where this young man can work who's gifted, who's anointed, what, what's your expertise? What's your expertise? Expertise? Um, do you have a college degree? Yes, I do. What's Human the college resource. degree? Human resource management. Human resource management, college degree. <laughs> If you're watching online, Human Resource College, no, no, this is this is the Potter's House. This is what we do. That's right. This is what we do. Amen. Amen. This is what we do. Amen. I need you to see us after. We might need help here. Somebody knows somewhere that needs help. Now, your last question, other question. Um, I was going to ask, um, you might have mentioned this before, but where, in, apart from putting your money in your savings account, because it's not really doing anything, right. where can you put your money to grow that interest in our high yield money market account. High yield money market is what you do. You, you're, you're looking at 0.01% at the bank, what we talked about, for these high yield money market rates, and you can go to bank rate, what is it called? Bank Bankrate.com. Bankrate.com, and you can get in a list of about five to six different uh, high yield money market accounts that, that it requests, that require no minimum, and you'll make 4% or higher. A lot of times it's 5% plus. So that's, that's the way you do that. Oh, I need everybody to jump on their feet and give Mr. Dyer a hand because oh, he did an amazing job. Hand. Good God. Listen, I feel led to do this tonight. Uh, my wife is somewhere. She's got the she money. I need everybody to sow something into this. I know we've given and you've given, but if you feel led, we've got deacons in the back. I need some. If you're watching online and you want to sow the information, you'll see that there. Uh, you can text 28950. I need somebody to sow something into this because I think somebody just saved thousands and thousands upon thousands and even millions of dollars. Yep. You are going to be debt free and you are going to be a millionaire. Without a doubt. I, I, didn't, I didn't hear nobody. Uh, no. no. What do we got? If you can go ahead and give our announcements, then we're going to close out. Okay, wasn't that awesome information? Yes, and for everybody that's standing, everyone that's online, that information was worth sowing into. All of us are looking for a return. So now is your opportunity online. You can sow by scanning that QR code. Instructions have been given. If you are in the room and you have sowed, here's an opportunity to sow again into good ground, good soil. So we're going to take this opportunity for everyone to sow. And then after you all do that, then we're going to take a minute for you all to sow. And there's a QR code. And then I'm going to remind you that if you have, um, if you want to sow and you have an, and you need an envelope, there are PMTs in the back of the room. Yes, I'm done. I'm going to turn it over back to you guys to close. Listen, whatever, we're not, first of all, this church is not here to just take your money. Bishop Jakes has written 47 books. He's now at his 17th movie. We've had five Potter's House churches, um, 300, three to 400 homes across the street. That's probably getting ready to expand. Without a doubt. Got the T.D. Jakes Foundation. We've got T.D. Jakes Real Estate. We've got T.D. Jakes uh, enterprise. This is so that you can understand that you're sowing where you're going. No one asked me to do this tonight. This is in my gut. Everybody who can, sow whatever you can on your way out of the door. If you're watching online, the information why that will be on the screen. You can text 28950. We're going to sow into the kingdom because what's happening here is you're getting ready to develop a testimony. Some of you, and, and, I, and I'm closing so we can get out of here, but some of you, you looked at the paper and you're like, oh, my God, I'm convicted. You should be convicted because you're robbing yourself. 
We talk about should a man rob God, tithes and offering. And some of you are giving the tithes and offering all day long, but you're robbing yourself by not budgeting that extra cup of coffee, that sugar habit you can't kick, whatever that subscription is, the extra whatever you need to put, the highlight in your hair. I'm not saying you can't have it. Be you. Be you. Get the braids. Be you. But do it on a budget. That's all I'm trying to articulate. That's, that's the key. That's the key. Father, we thank you for what you've done tonight. Thank you that as Mr. Dyer taught and the Holy Spirit just moved, that we learn bills are important. <laughs> we learn the proficiency of budgeting, and we're going to take the next step for many of us to invest in brokerage accounts, expand in mutual funds, and maximize our 401ks and do what we can with 529s and so much more, God. Show us how to pay more on our mortgage and everything else so that we might be a glorious church. You're coming back for a glorious church without spot, wrinkle, or blemish, and I believe that's not debt-free or that, that that is debt-free, oh God. We thank you for what you're going to do. I thank you for the future millionaires in this room. I thank you for the person in this room who wish they had something to sow, but God, you're giving them a formula for success. I thank you for the person in this room that you're going to show them how to mix up the properties. I thank you for the person in this room. You're going to show them how to get more life insurance. I thank you for the person in this room, God, that you are elevating in promotion and bonuses and contracts and so much more. We give you the glory for what you're going to do next week in the invincible name of Jesus. Together as a church, we're going to say... Amen. We love y'all. Have an amazing night. Our food trucks are still open. And Our we will see you at the back doors. See you next week.